Hey, Soul Tribe, it's your Soul Coach Jeremy Wright, and hoping you're healing deeply and living fully. And this is secret number three for Scorpio Rising. Scorpio Rising secrets. These are little Scorpio snacks for people that have Scorpio Rising in their natal chart. And this is from my years of astrology coaching and my own personal life journey being a Scorpio Rising myself. You know, I've had a few people say, Jeremy, why can't you be a little bit more positive about Scorpio Rising? The last few ones, you talked about the chaos, you talked about, you know, drama and different things that people face with Scorpio Rising. And I would say to those people, I love Scorpio Rising. There's a lot of great things about Scorpio Rising that I'm going to get to. Uh, it, you know, they're the healers. They're the transformers. These are the most in emotionally intelligent people in the Zodiac because they can see right through people, but they can also sense what's not being said. They can read between the lines. They can feel the current. And they make, like I said, excellent counselors. And many people with Scorpio Rising uh, fall under two categories, especially if you look at the Vedic of Scorpio Rising. They can become very spiritual people, which have a lot of deep revelations and downloads from the spiritual world and really grow in their soul. Or they can go the opposite way and become very rich realize that Pluto, being ruled Pluto, you ever heard of Pluto crap? These are very wealthy people. So these are very ambitious, driven for success. And so a lot of times you can see a combo of Scorpio rising, being very spiritual and very um, uh, materialistically driven. And so uh, ultimately, though, whether you're going after a lot of material success and worldly success, I'm always going to encourage you to have a spiritual walk because Scorpio is the sign of spirituality. Now, I know we got Pisces that represents spirituality and we got, uh, you know, Sagittarius, which rule uh, rules religion and spirituality another type of spirituality. But Scorpio is very spiritual because it's getting to the heart of your soul, the depths of your soul. It's kind of going through hell and finding your way to heaven. And so it's a real spirituality that where the rubber hits the road and you really call out on God or call out on spirit because you've lived through it. And so, you know, a lot of people can, can talk about things, theorize about things and quite different when you've lived through something. So I don't want to get too off track here, but I want to say congratulations to Blissful Energy. She got uh, the free drawing for the first free reading for a Scorpio Riser. So uh, Blissful Energy, I'll be reaching out to you soon to set up your free reading. For the rest of you that put underneath the comments that you would like a reading, uh, don't be discouraged. Your name isn't taken off the list. And if this is the first time you're watching me and you're a Scorpio riser, subscribe to the channel below. You're not going to want to miss any of the future secrets that I'll be giving. And if you would like a chance to win a future reading, put your name in the comment. You know, I said, you know, if you're, you know, I said in the comment section, say you're a new subscriber and you would like a reading. Well, some of you are a little shysty here where you're like, I'm a new subscriber and, and you put it in the comments, but you didn't subscribe. So, you know, actually subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it. And um, outside of that, I, I'm really excited for the, the interest in these secrets. And for those that are commenting and those that are putting things in the comment section, I really appreciate it. Uh, there's two videos I want to encourage you to watch if you haven't. Go back to about five months ago, scroll down through my videos, and you're going to see a thing called Scorpio Rising, why there's so much unfair attacks. If you've not seen that, that is my first real long length long length Scorpio rising video. Uh, it's kind of what set these Scorpio secrets into motions. So I would really encourage you to go watch that if you have it. And then the other video, if you go way back, is called um, The Pain and Purpose of Being a Black Sheep. The Pain and Purpose of Being a Black Sheep. And if you've not watched that, I want to encourage you to watch that video because almost every Scorpio riser is in some way uh, the black sheep either of their family, of their church, of their organization, somewhere in their life, uh, you're, you're going to fill that role. And so I want you to watch that video, The Pain and Purpose of Being a Black Sheep. Okay, enough promo. Let's get to secret number three, uh, Pluto. Problem 
or prom uh, a problem or powerful? Is it powerful for you or is it a problem for you? And so the reason we need to talk about Pluto for Scorpio rising more than any other sign is in astrology, whatever the rising sign is in a natal chart, that becomes the chart ruler. So if you're not familiar with chart rulers, uh, you want to Google that. You're going to want to watch YouTube videos on that. But basically the chart ruler is the king of your chart. It's the most important planet because all the other planets, no matter how they're operating in your life, will somehow refer to the chart ruler. And so everybody has Pluto in their chart. So even though when we're talking to Scorpio rising, yes, if you're a Sagittarius rising, you still have Pluto. If you're an Aries rising, you still have Pluto. But Pluto takes on a much, much more uh, important role in the Scorpio rising because it's not just another planet, it is the chart ruler. And so we really got to pay special attention to where Pluto is placed in your chart. And in fact, do me a favor in the comment section, tell us where your Pluto is in your chart. Maybe we'll be able to compare notes. So with Pluto being the chart ruler, this is a huge deal. You know, if you're cooking, there are some ingredients that you can put a lot of it in and it's okay because it's not that strong, but there are other ingredients that are so strong in nature that if you put too much in it, you know, you're going to taste it. Like, you know, if you put too much salt into something, you're going to taste that extra saltiness. That's kind of like Pluto. Pluto doesn't take very much to really impact the situation. That's why if you got Pluto next to your sun, you're, you're a Scorpio sun then, because wherever Pluto sits next to a planet, it's going to put a lot of its energy into that planet. And so if you are a Scorpio rising, but you got Pluto next to your sun or your moon, or it's aspecting the luminaries or different planets, that's going to amp up even more the Scorpio theme in your life. So what I want to talk about right now is how Pluto sometimes can be a problem uh, if, it, if it gets too much in your life. And what I mean by this is because Pluto is compulsive. It's, it, it thinks about whatever it's touching to a very deep, deep realm. Why? Because Scorpio wants to get to the bottom of something. It won't let go of something until it's figured it out. And even after it's figured it out, it's like, okay, give me more of it. I want more of it. So there's, there's, there's digging that never stops with wherever Pluto is. And so you want to look at the house where Pluto is sitting in your natal chart because that's the house where you will be compulsively thinking about. So if Pluto's in the seventh, you're compulsively thinking about your relationships. If Pluto's in the tenth, you're compulsively thinking about your reputation and how and your career. And so you know, you know, Pluto in the sixth, you're compulsively thinking about your health. So wherever Pluto is as a Scorpio rising, that is where you can see a lot of transformation, a lot of changes, a lot of growth. But if you're not careful, you could also see it being too much for you to handle. It's almost like wherever you're putting Pluto in that chart as a Scorpio riser, that house is taking on too much energy. And so you're going to have to find a way to surrender your thoughts about it. Surrender your thoughts about that house because, you know, the idea that you're going to be able to to somehow change that house just with your thoughts. If I think enough about the relationship, I'll attract it to me. Or if I think enough about my career, I'll attract it to me. You know, no, Pluto is going to really say, you got to surrender to the higher power. You got to surrender everything you think you know about that house. You may want everything in that house so bad, but wanting it isn't going to make it happen. You got to surrender and let things play out on its own. And if you constantly are thinking about whatever that house is, it's too much mental energy. It's almost like you ever try to date someone and they're desperate. You ever notice that desperate people have a way of turning off potential daters? Where Pluto can put you, whatever house Pluto is in, it can make you very desperate. Why? Because there's this deep urgency that you feel like something major has to happen with that house. 
So I'm telling you for a Scorpio secret, number three, wherever your Pluto is, learn to relax. Learn to catch yourself when you're overthinking about that house situation and take your hands off it and just say, you know what, Pluto? If there's going to be a major transformation in this area of my life, I'm leaving it up to spirit. I'm leaving it up to God. I'm surrendering because you'll drive me crazy thinking about these situations. So catch yourself when you're overthinking wherever Pluto is because a little is a lot. And if you're not careful, you'll think about that, that house way too much. You're putting too much pressure on that house and it won't live up to what you're wanting. Take the pressure off by catching how compulsive you're thinking and redirect your thinking to different houses and realize you will be changed in the house that Pluto's sitting, but it's going to take its own sweet time. It's going to happen in its own mystical way and just allow it to happen naturally instead of trying to force it to happen because you're going to feel desperate, anxious, overly concerned where Pluto's sitting. Don't be that way. Take a deep breath and relax. All right, this is already 11 minutes, and I know how we are in YouTube world where, you know, too long, too much. So with that being said, a little bit of Pluto goes a long, long way. Pluto is very powerful wherever it is placed, but make sure that you're not letting it become obsessive. See you in the next secret. That'll be number four coming up. And if you'd like to win a free reading, please subscribe below. And if you haven't, um, you know, listened to any of the other videos, I appreciate some of that YouTube love. And we'll see you in the next video.